Okay, this is a controversial topic. All right, here we go. We're here today to dispel some common myths about heart disease. I'm Emmanuel Mustakakis. I'm an interventional cardiologist. I'm um, Elsa Jardina. I'm a cardiologist. And we're rolling. A broken heart can damage your heart. This is actually not a myth. Stress-induced cardiomyopathy is clearly understood to be associated with major stress, major significant emotional stress uh, that can impact suddenly. It is more common in women. Um, the symptoms can really feel like a heart attack, the chest yeah. pain and, and, and the shortness of breath. It can be very dramatic. A glass of red wine a day is good for your heart. Actually, most of my friends ask me this question, yeah. not my patients. <laughs> this is probably not a myth. This is probably true. The two points I always try to uh, drive home with my patients when this question comes up is that, number one, we're talking about one glass of red wine a day. We're not talking about one bottle of red wine a day. Uh, and that the benefit does not extend to other sources of alcohol. So it does not extend to beer, does not extend to hard liquor, and uh, it probably does not extend to white wine either. Uh, but one glass of red wine a day, I agree, probably does have some benefit. On the other hand, it's never been proven in a randomized study. Your heart skips a beat when you sneeze. That is absolutely false. It's a <laughs> complete myth. Heart disease is really a man's problem. This is a myth. Heart disease is an equal opportunity disease. The majority of women who die from um, heart disease tend to be older than men, and this is probably what accounted for the myth. Yeah, 100%. In fact, uh, more women die of cardiovascular disease every year than all forms of cancer combined. But yes, this, this I agree, is 100% uh, a myth. Heart failure is the same as a heart attack. This is a myth. They are two distinctly different things. So the heart is a muscle. Patients who have heart failure have an abnormality of the muscle of the heart. So the muscle does not contract normally, uh, and that is the cause of heart failure. On the other hand, a heart attack is related to the coronary arteries of the heart, which feed the muscle of the heart. So if a patient has a heart attack, there's an obstruction or a blockage in the coronary artery. I can perform CPR on myself. <laughs> um, <laughs> I've never tried. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's not possible. Um, yeah. For one thing, CPR is really only indicated if you've lost consciousness. Uh, so I'm not sure how you would perform uh, that on yourself. Yeah. You will get heart disease if it runs in your family. Uh, this is not a myth, this is true. There are well-established cardiovascular risk factors for a heart attack, and one of the most important is if a parent had a premature death from a heart attack or some form of heart disease. And a premature death would be a mother who died before the age of 65 and a father who died before the age of 55. Premature family history uh, is a major risk factor for coronary disease and, and heart attacks at a young age. Particularly, uh, I've noticed uh, a lot in men whose mothers had heart disease at a very young age. Men, particularly even as young as their late 20s or early 30s. The amount of sleep you get a night affects your heart health. This is also not a myth. Um, increasingly we know that inadequate sleep leads to a lot of potential um, adverse health events. The science on this is pretty clear that uh, people who get fewer than six hours of sleep on average a night probably have a higher risk of heart attacks in general compared with people who get more than eight hours of sleep a night. There's recently been some evidence that people who have poor amounts of sleep also tend to gain weight and to be more obese. And with obesity goes increased high blood pressure, increased lipids, increased diabetes, all of which are also risk factors for heart disease. A heart flutter is a sign of heart disease. This could be a myth or could not be a myth. 
it really depends on what the heart flutter is uh, a symptom of. So sometimes a heart flutter can just be because you see somebody who's extraordinarily handsome, or it can be related to what we refer to as an arrhythmia of the heart. Yeah, I think when patients describe a fluttering sensation, sometimes it's a completely normal response. Sometimes um, it can just be a typical hormonal response to uh, exercise, to a uh, scary situation. You see uh, uh, a wild animal chasing you, or if you get into a fight, it doesn't necessarily mean that there's anything uh, abnormal about it. Sitting is as bad as smoking when it comes to your heart. This is a really interesting new concept that has evolved in uh, cardiology. Now we're beginning to discover that people who are sedentary and who sit around in desk jobs um, really uh, increase their risk for cardiovascular disease. So it's now recommended to get up um, every um, half an hour or so and walk around for about 10 minutes and um, that hopefully will reduce your cardiovascular risk. Yeah, I agree with that, but uh, I, th I think probably at the end of the day, smoking's still the single worst thing you could probably do. Okay, the bonus question is, can you have sex after a heart attack? Um, this question comes up all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, the men seem to want to ask me a lot more than the women do. The answer is yes, but typically I don't recommend it right away. And it depends a little bit on the type of heart attack that you had, depends a little bit on if there was any significant heart failure or heart muscle damage. But typically the conventional forms of, of the true heart attack, if you will, uh, I'm gonna recommend at least three or four weeks of refraining from any significant physically strenuous activity, mm -hmm. and that includes sex. Mm -hmm. But in the long term, the great majority of patients will go back um, to their normal sexually active lifestyle. Yes, uh, sex is in their future, maybe just not right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs>